Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It's Mr. Poke Games or Poke if you prefer. We are back for some more Starfield, but we're here for something a little different. First of all, it's not anything that happened Thursday. I know that's different, but I'm doing a guide today, which I've never done before, and I'm only doing because a friend asked for something, and I figured it was good just to put it out. If it ends up helping a couple people, a hundred people, a couple thousand people, all more the merrier. It, it, it would have helped me... I don't, I don't even know how much if I'd known this at the beginning of the game just because I wouldn't know how to plan I wouldn't know what to aim for I wouldn't know the fastest way to reach the end um, Now I will preface this by saying this contains no story spoilers I got an Andrea quest down there at the bottom that has to do with Companionship, so don't worry. It's not a spoiler for the story her story technically, but there's nothing there And I'm not gonna talk about it. So don't worry There shouldn't be any spoilers Period. At least I will try not to. If something happens dialogue-wise, sorry, I can't help it. Just know that the chance of a spoiler is probably between five to ten percent, and the rest is, be and that's basically with that person that's out of my control. Um, and, but for the most part, I will try not to spoil anything as far as I can help it. I'm gonna assume that everybody that's watching this video is at least level ten to fifteen, um, as I would hope to God you would be if you're looking for like an like the best one of the best, if not the best, money grinds in the game. Um, both with glitches and without, and then the best end game XP method. Uh, why I've, rec I've been recording a playthrough, part two will be coming out this week. Part, no, part two, one came out on Saturday, Sunday, I tried doing an upload and it got fucked over, uh, by YouTube, so thank you for that. So that'll be coming out later, but basically four videos, five videos for Starfield will be coming out this week. Hope you guys enjoy. Oh, uh, this included. Uh, -huh. but... And none of those videos do I sh um, or do you get to see all the fun little things uh, like I have on me and stuff. So you kind of get to see what to look forward to. I might have this gear, but I also it's not going to be as upgraded as it is on me. I'm going to try not to go to my scales. I'm going to try not to go to my inventory. Actually, no, I will need to go to my inventory. But I'm going to try not to show too much because I want you guys just to enjoy watching the game and stuff. Uh, is it only 37%? Oh, it, that, that was after me scanning it. Sorry, I have, like, a buffed scanner. Let's go back. So, uh, let's explain this first. The beginning of this video is going to be... Uh, I I'm going to make this as comprehensive as I can and make it as short as I can, okay? <laughs> the first part of this video, video is probably 10 to 20 minutes. Probably more like 15, 20 minutes. is going to be just the money first. I'm doing money. If you, if you want to, uh, like, the fastest ways to earn money... So, if, if you want to, um, I don't know, skip ahead 15, 20 minutes, you'll probably be on the XP portion. Like, I'll, pr I'll try to put a timestamp down below so you guys know. Uh, my friend might not be able to just because he'll be getting, like, the pre-public version. But still, regardless, uh, you can just look at timestamps. For those that want to watch the whole video, thank you. The support's appreciated, but this is as comprehensive as I can fucking make it. No, it is not a tutorial for the XP. I'll, I'll get to that in a bit. No, it is not a tutorial. It's like step by step of, oh, this is how you get the ship. This is how you get all the pieces. No, I'm telling you how to do it, telling you how I got here, and you you should be able to do said thing too. It's not that hard. Um, anyway, so right now, currently, we're starting with the first method that does not include glitches. Um, this is the fastest money, fastest, most efficient, and uh, most bang for your buck way and when i say bang for your buck in this sense i mean best like most money for your time that does not include glitching out of the map like or hunting for um glitching out of the map or pulling pull, like grabbing chests outside the map that, that sort of thing like this is the best way just grabbing loot doing it the original way is it kind of still an exploit yes but it's using something in the game you're not having to go out of the map and you're just taking advantage of game mechanics uh, but right now as you guys can see, we're in the Olympus system. It's a very low-level system. You guys should be able to enter here. As soon as you can fly with your ship. This is Alpha Centauri. You should know where this is. You got Sol right there. That's our solar system with Mars. You got here. Uh, <coughs> you should be in where Gen Gen Genison, whatever. Uh, where New Atlantis is. You guys should be able to see that. Literally just to the right, you'll see two little orbs. You got the two balls. Arania and Olympus. Okay. You go in here. You click... Oh, I clicked Arania. Son of a... Let's just go back. You're going to go here. You're going to go to Olympus. 
and then once you're in Olympus, you're going to go over to the only thing that's like this. It's literally the only thing that looks like it in the entire solar system next to planet Nizoi. You don't click on Nizoi, you click just outside of it, you'll click on Almagest, and then you'll launch, and you'll go here, it'll send you into the orbit of Nizoi. Let's go out here. And then once you're in orbit of it, I want you to do two things. First of all, doing maximize the amount of loot that you're getting. Can I, can I, can I, yeah. To maximize the amount of loot you're getting, make sure you're on very hard. I don't care if you think you can handle very hard, I'll explain why in a minute. So set your game on very hard, and if you really want to be safe, just save the game. It, I promise you, you'll be fine. It's, it's not, it's not a big thing. Now... I'm a level 108 and some of you are like, well, you've probably just been chilling at that level for a long time. No, I've had, I've been, 24 hours ago, I was level 28. That's how overpowered this XP glitch is. It's fucking nuts. Um, and yeah, and, and, and once again, it's not like a glitch glitch. It's also an exploit. Much like the pol poltergeist, whatever the hell, like Almagest, whatever, for the space station. Yeah, we're just gonna board. Much like this Almagest method, I doubt it'll be patched because it's part of a core part of the game. They would have to nullify a part of the game in order for them to get rid of this. Do I? Is it possible? Yes. But do I think they'll do it? No. The out of the map stuff? Yeah, that'll be disappearing. I can guarantee it. I don't know when, but it will be disappearing. I'd be surprised if they left today. Is, is that how I'm sure mods can uh, take can fucking m put it back, but. I got Vasco. He's not normally my companion. Uh, Andreja is the one I'm trying to charm. So she's the one I'm bringing around with me all the time, uh, which is why her quest is there. You're going to see a bunch of people in here. Now, some of you are still probably wondering, well, you let it on very hard. I don't know if I can handle that. In case you didn't know, whenever you load into a place like a space station or you're looting a ship and you're going to board or whatever the hell, because, you know, you target a ship, you shoot out its engines, you board the ship. Before you board the ship, Put your game on the highest difficulty. In case you didn't know, just a little fun fact. Difficulty does not affect the amount of XP you get. It affects what loot you have a chance to get. So the higher the difficulty that the, the area is set, the better the odds of you getting like better items. Uh, so you increase your chance to get legendaries or epics or, what, or rares or whatever. But if you have it on easy or very easy all the time, you're likely to find a, lot, a lot, hell of a lot more commons, and very rarely will you find more um, legendaries. I find a lot of legendaries on a normal playthrough, but this is a great way to increase your odds, but putting it back down to very easy does not mess with the loot pool. And the reason for that is, is because we preloaded into the map with it set on very hard. So the game is going to recognize it as very hard. And now this is going to be very overpowered and broken and... You guys are just going to see me storm through this. I love this gun so much. You have no fucking idea. I got this on normal, by the way, and pe people are like, where'd you get the gun? It was a random drop. So I I wish I could say that it could be passed along, but it's not, or picked up from someplace specific, but I don't think it's I will be so sad to see this gun go eventually. See, we got a rare. Legitimately, it's just bad luck if you don't get a... Uh, stuff better than that i try to check everybody but obviously i haven't checked the first dude that i killed all right i'm lagging a little bit hope you guys can ignore that being in the zero g environment is actually very fun um where are you at here you don't have to kill everybody but you know you certainly can i like to just because it's a it's a loot and xp grind like it's not just the loot it's also an xp grind because if you have it set on very hard these guys are going to be set at a decent level where is he at their way down there is that what happened yeah sometimes they come up through the floor even though they're technically not supposed to be able to 
I made the mistake of giving spacers the benefit of the doubt. I do not make that mistake anymore. Alright, now let's double check our loot. Just trying something. Uh, looking for dead bodies floating around. Maybe I got them all? Whatever. It doesn't matter. They probably didn't have anything worthwhile. What you're here for isn't even the spacers. So don't worry about it. I'm only going to be running through this once. But it takes you about... If I t I've timed it before. If you're grabbing everything... Like, you just kill people and you're running this as fast and efficiently as possible. It should take you 45 minutes. Like, it's not that bad. And that's and I say that as somebody who likes to loot everything. Like, I would go open every chest. There's a couple lockpicks you can open. Like, I'm, I'm just going to go through uh, some of the basic stuff there. I used to pick up guns all the time, but after earning a certain amount of money, I just stopped caring. That ship you guys saw me flying around in, um, that's actually something none of my videos have seen so far. <laughs> Uh, but it's a monster I made off camera, and it's like, what, more than half a million dollars to craft it? And in case you're wondering why it's structured that way, then uh, I'll leave that to your own imagination. I'm kidding. Uh, look up OP. It's like OP ship build or whatever the heck. I'm not going to take credit. I should say that too, and I should have said it at the very, very, very get-go. Uh, I cannot take credit for anything that I'm showing here. These methods were not found by me. Do I know who the original person was? No. Uh, but that's, you know, I, I will not claim credit as being the one who found this. Gotta grab some stuff in there. And look, you're also increasing the odds of whatever the heck you find in here. You can go on the manager's computer. If you go in here, you basically get codes for something else. I'll show you guys in a minute. Uh, if you guys have your lock picking skill up, you guys can do this. I'll do this really fast just so you guys can see. Uh, I shouldn't have used the automatic, but it's all good. Um, Master just done easily. You get some ammo, and you get a hunting rifle. Neato. This is a great way for you to get some XP and possibly get some good loot. I mean, I myself, I enjoy the lockpicking skill. I know some people loathe it. So if you loathe it, maybe this is not for you. Uh, maybe you just grab the end of the game, the end game loot, which is uh, for this farm. It's the contraband. I'll show you guys that room here in a minute. The second I'm done opening these. I'm just showing you that you can get some stuff. Last time, uh, I did two runs before this video because I wanted to show you guys what the loot of three, one, three runs looks like when you do this grind. Um... Ooh, I fucked up. Son of a bitch, I fucked up again. Let's just do that. I couldn't care less. My uh, my lock picking skills on max, so it's like I care, but I also really, really, really don't. All right, so I got the stuff there. I. Uh, <laughs> Obviously, I didn't loot everything that I could because I know there's a couple spacers bodies that I missed But your main loot's gonna be behind the vault doors. You're gonna come in here If you got the code or you can look it up for the jackpot You can do this for once you can only do it one time and I think it gives you like what? Five ten thousand something like that It's not a lot of money at least not to me um, but it might mean something to you. So if you care about that, by all means, grab it. It's a one-time grab. So you might as well, that manager's computer will give you some numbers. Or like I said, you can simply just look it up. Spacer's communication. The second you're done looting the contraband, you come back out here. Hello, Vasco. Greetings, Captain. Greetings to you too. I'm not going to be able to calculate the amount of money that I got off that. I don't know. Let's just say you get about around about 800 on pickup ish more. Let's just, uh, you know what? No, because I know I got more than that off a of three run. Well, no, per round you get, let's just say between 600 to a thousand credits, as long as you're picking up everything. And that's even before you sell any of the loot. It doesn't sound like a lot, 
But let me go ahead and get up here and I'll show you guys. Off of three runs, the reason that I say this is the best method that I'm aware of, that's like non-glitch, is because on very hard, you increase the loot that you can get, you increase the contraband you can get. Uh, let's not do that. Inventory. Misc. Deposit all of these. Uh, let's store all those. Sorry, guys. And store that. Store that. And weapons. This I got on my second run. I got a legendary concussion bar knife. I don't really use melees like that. But I guess if you are a melee person, you could have a fun time. I don't know what it is with melees that you get on that. But you get a lot of melees. Um, these are my weapons. I'm not going to go into those because they're maxed the fuck out. Haha. <laughs> um... <laughs> Not things I need to do on here. Uh, but let's go over here to Misk. Off of three runs, we got... Actually, let's do this. Sort by value. That would, that would find it at the top. So, off of three runs, I got six Xenoware techs, which six valued at 16,000. You'll probably get about 11, 12,000 out of each of them. And that's if you have the max commerce, commerce skill. I do. I'll show you guys that in a second. But then you get 11 of these, I've also about 16,000, then four of these at nearly 15,000, and a couple of these over at 12,000. So off of three runs, you got about 19, 25, 25 contraband items, all of which probably going to fetch you about 10k. So that means 250k. Is there going to be some wait time? Yes. Yes, there will be a wait time for you to sell stuff to the appropriate people. And I'll recommend the guy on Neon, personally, just because it takes way less time to get to him. Um, also, that's that's ones that I just had in there. But you also got this armor, which is valued at about 22000 You get a bunch of these packs that are valued at about, you know, a couple K a piece for some of them. And, like, you get a bunch of weapons and helmets that are also worth a bit. By the time you sell all of this, uh, I think... Within two hours, I'd earned about 350k. Um, and now, by the way, guys, I was in my 20s running this. Like, I mean, early 20s, level-wise. And so I know it's a grind that you can do at an early level. It's not hard. You change the difficulty from very hard to very easy, and suddenly everybody dies super squishy. I could have kept it on very hard, but just to show you guys that the loot pool doesn't really change, and you can just blow everybody out of the water, I changed it to very easy. Uh, whether or not you want to do with some sort of honor system is completely up to you. Uh, <laughs> but, let's see. So, we got the contraband from there. If you do go to sell this contraband, though, um, I recommend that you go to... Here, let's show you all. This is Olympus, okay? You just came to the right. You go down a bit more, and you go to Volley. For those that haven't been there, I recommend you go to Volley Alpha, and you'll see Neon here. Now, oh, I can just scan planets that aren't even in the same solar system. That's wild. Uh, sorry, I upgraded a bunch of stuff today because I leveled up 70 fucking plus times. <laughs> 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 like, my brain's just like, that's neat. Anyway, sorry. Uh, but I would recommend going to Neon Core. If you can travel to Neon Core... Uh, then the, literally you go there, you turn right, literally to your immediate right is the, um, trade authority and they'll buy your contraband. Now I will say this, do not bother with this grind. If you do not have a way to hide your contraband, I'll say it again for the people in the back. For the love of God, do not do this grind. If you do not have a means to hide your contraband. And when I say that, I mean, does your ship have modules? Like for me, uh, sh like shielded cargo. That's what this is. This is this is shielded cargo. The, these these white things on the side, they're all shielded cargo. Shielded cargo can hide things like stolen goods, and also you know contraband. If you do not have shielded cargo, for the love of fuck, don't do this grind because you'll get caught. Was that enough? I think it's enough. But if you guys go do that, and you do have shielded cargo, which I would hope that you do, you can get it by going to Wolf System, or I'll, sh I'll show that in a second. But another way you can basically get a chance of getting away with your contraband is if you buy a Deception Perk. It's on the second level of Social. It's not hard. If you're early game, I recommend leveling up Commerce, Persuasion, and Theft. 
Scavenging's okay, but I literally just got that recently, which is why it's still a rank one, because I was like, yeah, I'll pick it up, because, you know, I'll be playing with these perks for a long time. Um, but anyway, you can get this. It'll make you 10%, uh, sorry, it gives you a 10% chance, 10% more, 10% less of a chance of your contraband being detected, and you can improve it all the way up to 50%. Uh, right now, with shielded cargo plus that it's about a 72 percent chance i will say with the additional contraband it increases your it increases your odds of being okay. caught something to keep in mind okay so if you have shielded cargo even without deception you can do it my recommendation and i'll show it to you now is if if you have shielded cargo and you're like well i got a bunch of contraband and i'm not confident i can beat the system do what I do, okay, and it'll save you a lot of heartache. Because even with a 70% chance, I still got stopped. <laughs> Funny enough. Um, let's set course for this planet. We're going to jump. You guys get to see my fun little crazy ass ship. It's, it's literally just... Somebody in the Starfield community made this ship, and then it got passed around to a couple other people, and then I heard about it. It's broken. It's not what this video is about, though, but if you are curious, just go look it up. I promise you it'll be worth a look, but I don't recommend actually building it until you've uh, upgraded some of your perks that have to do with shipbuilding. Personally, that's what I think, but you can do whatever you want. I splurged on this ship like it was going to be like my end game I'll have forever. All right, so we're going to get to the system. Okay. As you guys can see, I'm going to be scanned for contraband, but before I get scanned, I save. If they would have called the ship, I would have rejected, gone to press the menu. Sorry. I would have gone to press the menu. I would have immediately loaded my save and then tried again. It doesn't matter if they're currently scanning you. If you go back to that save, it'll basically be like re-rolling those odds. And you keep doing that until you can make it through. Now, what we're going to be doing is the next money glitch. Or the actual money glitch. The other one's more of an exploit. This one's definitely a glitch. Um, and I'll show you guys a... If you guys don't want to do that, if you guys don't want to do... I'm gonna, I call it the pirate and the merchant grind, okay? Pirate grind is you go there, you kill everyone, you loot all the shit, you leave... And then you go to Venus, you sleep on Venus for 24 hours, and then you do it over and over and over and over and over. Now the and then the merchant grind is you go uh, to Ven you go to New Atlantis, you go underneath the map, you steal from chests, you leave New Atlantis, you go to Karai City or whatever the fuck it's called, you loot a couple more chests, you go to Venus, you sleep for a day. And then you can repeat. So either way, both of these grinds include the time planet, as I call it, Venus, because or time skip planet. Because you go there, sleep for 24 hours, and in case you don't know, an hour there is 100 hours. So 24 freaking 100 hours. Basically, you're there for 100 days, um, which is nuts. <laughs> but, you know, that doing that resets the old, oh my guys, and it also resets the vendors and everybody else. So, I suppose it makes people more comfortable. The most efficient way to do this grind, if you're going to go outside the map, is actually to go to the Commerce District. But I wanted to show you guys, this is a problem with this, is that if you do this grind, there's the potential that the ship services guy on this planet just gets deleted, Hakaid, out of existence. Like, he's no longer here. He doesn't exist. Sorry, not sorry. Is it a big deal to some people? Yes. Is it a big deal to me? No. Because anything that I would have needed him for, I'm already done with. But for somebody who doesn't want to mess with their player experience at all, I don't necessarily recommend this unless you want to be saving every time and being super, super careful. But it is completely up to you. Now, if you want to ask me which which grind is more efficient, it would definitely be the glitch. But if you want to ask me which one I think could be more rewarding, like if you want loot and money, then, I, then I'd then i recommend the pirate glitch, uh, the, the pirate exploit. Like, pirate or merchant method. Either way, you do you. But this will be the merchant method. And the reason that I'm not going from the Altageist 
to Venus immediately is because I can just reset everything. You, you can literally just do both. You can go to the Altergeist, kill everyone, loot everything, and then go to New Atlantis, go loot all the chests, go to Aquila City, which is in another solar system, and loot those chests, and then go to Venus and just reset and repeat and repeat and repeat. I've done that a couple times. But it all depends on what you're doing. I wasn't going to do any of the outside the map stuff, but after I decided to record this video, I was like, yeah, I'll do it a couple times, and that way the people that watch my content be able to are able to pick and choose, or my friend Jason's able to pick and choose. Well, however you want to play this out is completely up to you, your play style, what you feel comfortable doing. Um, if it's, you know, the, going outside the map stuff, that'll probably be patched eventually. At, at the very least, I don't see them leaving in here forever. It's a little broken. You just run past UC distribution. You see it right here. You run past this building. You can see uh, the UC right over there. You jump on this tree. Sorry, I should have been talking a bit more. <laughs> uh, but if you would, you guys saw how I came in from the Commerce District. You fly up here. Now, it is highly recommended, okay? You don't need it, but it is highly, highly recommended that you have a power pack. I modded mine as a power pack. It, wasn't, it was a balanced pack originally when I got the Mantis set. If you don't have a power pack, the way that I recommend you getting up here, okay, is you do a small boost. Oh, shoot. And you land on this route. And then you wait, or I recommend actually landing at the top bit right there. It's just hard because I have a power pack, you know? Whatever. I screwed it up. But you know what I mean. Land on that route because you can actually land on that. It's solid. And then while you're riding the wall, you can just boost up. And then you mantle up, and then you, all you have to do is walk through this door. It is that simple. You walk through this door. Now, be careful, as depending on where you walk, you might start drowning in water, or if you walk too far over there, you might get spawned back in the map. Don't walk into any buildings if you can help it. My trick, and I almost never run in the water, like 9 times out of 10, I'm not in any water, is just hang right, wait until you get to the end here. Now you're going to fall off. And when you do this, make sure you boost before you hit the ground. And, like, you can do what I did. Don't... I, I'm a little ballsy with it because I've done it so many times. But if you're not careful, you might take some damage and you might die. I have perks that reduce my fall damage and all that shit. So, I'm not as affected as the average person. So, don't compare me to the average person. At least I wouldn't recommend it. First chest you can grab. It's not a lot of money. But you can grab some terror brews if you want. I believe they increase your O2. Um, you can honestly just take them and sell them somewhere else if you really want. I honestly just grab the, like, 1,500 credits or 20... I forget it was 15 or 25. doesn't matter. And then I go on with my day. There's also this chest over here. Now, keep in mind, this is the only chest I think you have to be a little cautious about because it's, uh, all the items in it register is stolen if you're going to enter the container. I still enter the container because a lot of this is valuable stuff. And when I say valuable stuff... I mean, like, I don't mess with most of it. I don't mess with the ammo because I don't want stolen items on me. I don't really, I don't take the money because I don't want stolen money on me. What I do take are the resources, and then I throw the resources in my ship. And then, like, I'll take stuff that's useful to me. So, case, er, no, I do not want to take all. Casium, that's useful to me. Uh, cobalt, that's useful. Copper, it's useful to me. Europium. A lot of these I've already looted, so like I've looted this a bunch of times. Oh, I'll t always take those. That's good. Um, Yodium. Dang, they don't have any neon. Neon's something you want if you're working on like gun mods and stuff. Uh, is it have other uses? Probably yes. But is it the use I remember at the top of my head? Yes. Xenon, Euterbium, and Zero Wire. Look at that. Now, here's another little trick. In case people are worried about becoming over-encumbered. Yeah, sorry. It can get a little glitchy depending on how you're looking. Because the game doesn't want you to be outside the map. Um, but in case you get over-encumbered, like, you know how if you're walking or sprinting, if you get over your weight. Like, I have a well-over-buffed weight. Like, I have, like, a 260 weight. 
that's with like the weightlifting perk and like armor and like armor and armor mods supporting me like i have a lot more carry weight than the average person keep in mind that much like being poisoned in minecraft as an example because i would assume that most of the population that's games that has gamed at this point has played minecraft uh see seventy two thousands in that chest make sure you don't boost if you boost you're gonna i'll show you what happens if you boost that's also how i glitched him out of the game is by jumping up right there and just because i came out from under him the game was like oh you don't need him anymore all right see ya um but if you jump and boost i'm suddenly back on the surface and if you do that if you boost out without being able to grab the shit then you'll immediately have to go all the way back to the commerce district and do all that over again and let me tell you, I've done it, and it's a painful experience, so I don't recommend it. But uh, keep in mind, back to my point that I was trying to make, you can't die from being heavy. So you will not die from being over-encumbered. Can you, you can't teleport, so it's inconvenient as hell. Also, don't use that as a point of reference. I have a shitload of cargo in there. Um, but regardless... <laughs> Uh, then we're gonna go from here. But if, yeah, if you can just walk back up to your ship and then drop it off in the cargo like I just did, it's, it's pretty effective. Uh, then we're gonna go from Alpha Centauri, open over, to Chan, I just didn't remember the exact name of the system. And then you're gonna click on Aquila. We're gonna have to jump here, because I have contraband. And then they're going to scan my ship. I recommend you go to Neon Core. I'll say that again. Don't. I, I recommend you go to Neon Core to sell your contraband. Because if you go to Neon Core. If you've never been to Neon. Go to Neon. You, you'll probably have story stuff there. You, I know. No. You pro don't. That's not probably. You do have story stuff there. But if you go to Neon. You know, go to Neon Core. I'm walking through Neon Core. Literally. The second you spawn on Neon Core. Turn to your right. It's, I think it's your right. If it's not your right, it's your left, but I, I'm pretty sure it's your right. If you immediately turn to your right, you should see the Trade Authority. Big yellow building. Those that know what it is, you know what it is. If you don't know what it is and want to know what it looks like, look it up. But I also promise you, you can't miss it. I'm going to go ahead and save just so I don't have to deal with this. Yep, see, I'll show you guys what I do. On the off chance that they target you or your contraband... This is why I don't recommend traveling around with contraband. It's a pain in the ass. But for me, I'm keeping it purely for you guys to watch, you know, see on YouTube. Um, you do need to go to a trade authority location. Are there areas that are... There's an area on New Atlantis in the, in the well, which is underground... There's an area in Neon Core. There's an area on Wolf. There's an area on Mars. There's four different planets right there that I know you can find. Um... There you go. Okay, complete. Go ahead and land. Like, I have pretty good odds of being of avoiding it, so I wasn't expecting to have to do that a bunch of times. All right, let's just land. Don't need to worry about all that. But... I'm just going to show you guys the chest in the ground here, and then I'm going to show you guys the way to reset it. Whichever method you guys end up doing, pirate or merchant, you can do both. I do think it's more convenient for you, though, so you're not making constant trips back and forth, is if you just pick one. If you do contraband, you can make trips back to the Almagest and to Venus. Venus is in the Sol system, I'll show you, but if you just go to the Almagest, loot. Go to Venus, sleep for 24 hours, go to the Almagest, loot. <laughs> Go back to Venus, sleep for 24 hours, and you're constantly doing that, you'll accumulate so much shit. You'll fill up your cargo, then you can just go to whatever merchant trade authority you want. Sell all of this stuff. It'll take a while. Like, probably, if you do it for two hours, it'll probably take you at least a half hour to an hour to sell it all. And I think that's just a fair trade. I think that's a fair trade. It's not that bad. I did it, you made some good money, and like I said, that's if you do not want to risk going outside the map but it is completely up to you it's all about how you want to play this video might be way longer than i intend it to be but it's perfectly fine because i honest to god i honest to god hope it helps people and we're not even to the longest part of the video <laughs>
smell of lumber, crops, and chunks? Yes, that is chunks. Alright, you come to Aquila City. What you want to do if you want to loot these chests? All you need to do... I know Aquila City. This is a really good chest, by the way. I highly recommend it. You don't have to go outside the map. It's super nice. There we go. I'm trying to crouch. If you come right here in the puddle, just you literally step back. You'll you'll see it. I promise. I've just done it enough times to where, like, I basically land on it every time. You go over to this chest. This one you don't have to worry about. It's not stealing. It'll literally just, like, I recommend grabbing everything that's in here that's, you know, is a form of treatment. Because that's really, really convenient. I recommend, this is all free ammo. It's just a way for basically infinite ammo, and it's beautiful. Um, if you see stuff in here that you want, like, I don't know, books or whatever, if you really like that stuff, take it. Um, resources there's always adaptive frames perfect if you're building a base that's part of the xp method so if you, i recommend highly recommend uh coming here to grab stuff for free just doing it and, and doing that over and over um i'm not gonna grab a lot of this stuff unless i actually no i'm just not gonna grab most of it not unless i see it think it's something rare uh i'm actually gonna need a couple of those sealant Definitely gonna need more of that. Stir wire. Most of this I can do without though. And if you get a misc, you can pick up 5,000 credits easy. And then I also always recommend picking up. Um, uh, sometimes there's some digit picks. It just depends. But honestly, not bad. There's also med packs and stuff in there too. So there's ammo, there's med packs, there's ship parts. Look at all that shit in there, guys. There's so much stuff. And it's all free. So, it, you, you, it's hard to beat that. It's literally hard. It's almost impossible to beat that value. That might actually be the most overpowered thing. Like, even the 72K, I don't think, is as overpowered as that. Like, that's, like, a general goods store where you can just rob their chest. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's broken as all. Get out. But basically, what happens is that after you're done looting these guys, as long as you don't need to go to the mining store or grab something else while you're here, you would immediately just teleport to Venus. So, that's what we're going to do. I'll, I'll try to run through it as if you're going from Alpha Centauri. Uh, Alpha Centauri right here. Literally, Sol is right here. If you just go to Sol, you go down here. That's Venus. I have a landing space on Venus, so I'm just going to go there. Oh, I got new data. What's the new data? Oh, and I got the trade. That's cool. I don't even know what that trade is. Active faulting. I don't, I don't know what that is, but cool. Uh, but... <laughs> Yeah, so you go to Venus or the time skip planet, as I like to call it, just because if you're going if you're going to go somewhere because you need to just pass time and you will need this for you'll be using this for the XP method too. So Venus will just become a, a home away from home. I actually plan to build a base on here eventually, but not the point. Uh, you need, by the way, in order to build a base on a planet like this, like in an extreme environment, you need a specific perk. So even if you wanted to build one just starting on Venus, you really couldn't. Um, but I'll get started on that in a minute. But all you need to do is you would come out here. I'm just gonna... Also, if you're wondering why it's blue, I colored my ship. I actually really like it. It looks cool, in my opinion. Uh, we're gonna go to the cockpit. Now, there's two ways to do this. One, you can sit and wait. Or two, you can sleep. I do think... Uh, I did sleeping for the longest time. But I learned that there's actually a longer wait time for sleeping than if you just sit. Because if you sit, the sitting animation takes longer than just going to sleep. But coming in and out of sleep is much more annoying than, you know, coming off of, well, just sitting and waiting. Is all you do. Sit and wait. You wait 24 hours because, like I said, it's 2400. And immediately after this, everything resets. The vendors, re like the merchant method resets and the pirate method resets. If you want to go back to Olympus and go to the Alma Guest, go do that. You literally just go to the Alma Guest, you go to Venus. You go to Alma Guest, you go to Venus. You go to Alma Guest, you go to Venus. And that is the pirate grind. I promise you that if you're doing it diligently, you can probably make more money than I did. 
even without the commerce thing maxed out because I didn't have it maxed out when I first started the method, but by the end of it, I definitely did. Um, but it's a decent way to get XP. It's a great way to get a bunch of guns and loot or whatever. It's a great way to get your lockpicking skill up because, like I said, the three safes and all of that. So it's really not bad at all for you if you just want to do a little bit of everything but also get a lot of money and not go outside the map. Now, if you want to exploit the map, I recommend you just do that. You do the merchant glitch. You go over to Olympus, you, uh, New Atlantis. You go to the Commerce District. You jump on the tree. You jump through the doorway outside the map. You go outside the map. You collect the money from the ca cafe. Then you go collect whatever you want that's stolen goods from Jameson or whatever the hell the shop is called. And then you go over to... You slowly make your way back over to where your ship is and collect the 72,000, go to Venus, sleep for the 24 hours, and then repeat that. And then I, you're you're making a basically 75k every single time you reset. And now, I'll say this to people too, if your ship merchant's still there, I did this a couple of times. I bought, like, I had like 600 plus k. I bought a couple of ships. All the money that you spent goes into his vendor chest. And so I would immediately go back and I basically got the ships for free because I went outside the map and then went to loot his chest and I got all the money back. So I bought at least five ships from him before he disappeared. And I sold them all later. Just because their ships aren't worth a whole lot, but it's just free money. Uh, <laughs> but I, you, you get the money back, so it's like you didn't spend anything. And it's just a, the reason I mention that is just because there's an achievement behind owning ten ships. So if you're an achievement hunter, you may appreciate that. Um, but even if you're not just doing the method normally, you'll earn enough money to buy the 10 ships pretty damn easily. Um, same, same thing goes with the, uh, the pirate. It's like Christmas every day. Uh, anyway, sorry. I have a specific crew. Uh, but we're going to go ahead. That is the end of the money-making method. Like I said, that's, that's in the soul system. You can either do one of two things. You can go to Alpha Centauri and start go to New Atlantis and start the merchant, or you can go to Olympus and go to the Almagest and start that grind. Like I said, if you're doing the Almagest, set it to very hard, enter the ship, and once you've entered the ship in that hallway, set it to very easy, and then just loot everything, and then leave, set it to very hard, and that's basically the only thing you're having to keep maintenance on is changing the difficulty. And that's not affecting XP, that's affecting your loot, which is what you're going in there for in the first place. I don't know if it affects your contraband too much, but it definitely affects what those people drop, and I think you'd want more legendaries. So, something to keep in mind, uh, considering I got a, a, a mini gun off of one of them at one point. Uh, but, yeah, something to consider. Now, what we're going to do now, we're going to go to one of my bases. I've built... Uh, for the moving forward, we're stepping away from the money stuff now. So timestamp, whatever you need to do. Um, actually that's a great time for me to check. Give me. Okay. And we're back. Sorry. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go to my main base at the moment. I've made, uh, in order to do this. Okay. You're going to be building an outpost. I'm going to try to go through this as slowly as possible. And you're going to need a couple of things. You're going to need two resources specifically on this planet. That's cool. You're going to need iron and you're going to need aluminum. And you're going to need them both in the same spot. That is a pain in the ass because they both exist in two different biomes. Okay? I know it's a pain in the ass. It took me hours to find one. I know it'll be hard for other people. But as long as you find a planet that has them, you should be okay. I promise. My base at the moment is over here. You guys can use the same location for all I care. I don't particularly mind. Um, just try to find a place that exists. Like, if you, um... Let's see, it's mountains. And then if you go over here, it says... That's chlorine. That's not what I'm looking for. That's not what I'm looking for. That's aluminum. Craters. So, mountains and craters. You have to find a biome that's between mountains and craters. And if you're able to do that, then you'll be able to find both your aluminum and your iron in the same spot. It took me a while. My first couple of planets, I'm not just going to recommend this. Feyman 4, it's good, but it's a level 55 planet. Most of you guys won't be able to access that in the get-go. Especially if you guys are um, <coughs> just starting the game. But a planet that I know works as well. Is it this one? No, it's Volley. No, it's, it's not Volley. It's not Volley. Not Volley. Where is it? It's Linus. That's what it is. It's level 45 planet. You'll be able to enter it a lot sooner. And, like, it, it's probably your easiest entryway into this that I'm aware of, anyway. And if you go to Linus, it's Linus 4B. It's a good planet, okay? It's got... I, I got a really, really good place for both of my bases. I have two bases on the same one. 
I have iron times four and and uh, aluminum times three. Those are all the different resources. Both have completely different resources, minus water vapor. But I don't really count that. So basically, I got l aluminum and um, was it? I think it's aluminum, water, and alkanes at the aluminum site. And at the iron site, I have gaturbium, which is super rare, by the way. Um, gaturbium, iron. Helium-3 and water. And if you're lucky, you're going to go to this planet and you're going to be able to find a place that's between both those biomes and you can exist and be happy and everything will be fantastic. But, or, you know, you could get unlucky like me and suddenly you're struggling to find a single place in existence that happens to share ground, um, which was unfortunately the case. It took me a long, long... I, I could not find a single place on this planet. I'm sure... Pe I know people have done it. No, I'm sure. I know people have done it. Like right there, you can clearly see iron and aluminum right next to one another. I'm sure that you can do it. I'm sure that it's possible. I highly recommend you check out that planet to make your outpost. But I'm going to be going to my outpost, which is on a, this planet. And it has been successful for me. Like I said, if you're looking at it without the scanner on, you're going to go around industrial outpost, blah, 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 blah. Scroll around so you see this big ass circle. Then... You're going to see this. I hope this helps people. Um, then I'm going to go here to my XP grind outpost. That's what I... I've dubbed them either by their... Res I dub my outposts either by the resources that they have and the number of resources or by what their purpose is. This is my XP grind. Like I said, less than 24 hours ago, I was level 28. Now I'm level 108. You do the math. It's very, very, very fucking effective. Now, does this require some setup? Yes, it does. First of all, and the hardest part, is finding a space that has aluminum and iron in the same place. If you, I reckon, I highly recommend checking out the planets that I'm pointing out, okay? And the reason for that, or either that, or try, if you can, if you scour both of these planets and can't find a single place and you've been looking for hours, look up other planets that also share iron, aluminum, and beryllium-3, or, or whatever the hell it's called. Because... What those resources are, beryllium three is a is a is a gasoline like energy that you're going to need to send your resources across the cosmos. <laughs> so if you want to make like a depot like base, you need that resource. Um, and then aluminum and iron are needed for this method to even work. Period. So right now, this is my base. I'll try to do like a bird's eye view here. Give me a second. I hope it works. Uh, do. -do, -do. It's not perfect. There are plenty of things that I can adjust, but it does its job. If you just press F and then press R after you put down your outpost, it's a very quick way to enter the menu. I'm just going to go up here. Um, and go to modify mode so I'm not having to deal with all this crap. Uh, but as you guys can see, these are all collectors for, was it iron? Yeah. I got an outpost that had iron on a hill. These are all, yeah, I, 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 I got built these because I did a bunch of research and stuff and then unlocked more stuff, which meant I could hold more stuff. Don't worry, I'll be showing you guys all that. And then this is where aluminum. This particular site actually had a lot of aluminum veins. Like, and when I say a lot, a lot, I could have put down more aluminum. I could have, like more uh, aluminum extractors, collectors, whatever you want to call them. Like, and uh, it's helium-3, not beryllium-3, helium-3. Helium-3 is the gasoline. And then I also built stuff to hold it. And that that's, that resource is what I have in going out to the export container. But for this particular method, all you need to know is, first of all, find a planet that shares territory. Or find find a planet that shares territory, if you can, of helium-3, aluminum, and iron. But the key is aluminum and iron. If you don't care about a depot, you don't care about sending resources, and you don't care about like having the most efficient base possible, then don't care about helium-3. Just aluminum and iron. That's all you need. Unfortunately, the game makes it very annoying to find planets that share both of those, as they always seem to want to have one or the other. But uh, they do exist. Um, and so once you get those extractors, you build them. Uh, I can't answer build them, unfortunately, because this, this happens at times. It's a glitch. Uh, just going over like two of these really fast two glitches that can happen one is you come to your post you enter build mode and You can't do anything. All you have to do is save and load Like as in I mean save the game and then load that save and then it'll put you in the same exact place and then everything will be fine again um, Actually, no, I'll tell you three or two if you're like going in and you're trying to use like your workbench and shit And it's not letting you like you see my workbench is in there if it's saying they're obstructed 
you need to exit out of Starfield, exit out of whatever your client is, open the client, open Starfield again, and then it should be fixed. And then for the love of God, this is where the red flag is, and I had to warn my friend about it. If you are making a base, do not move the outpost beacon that you placed initially after you start crafting your base. Otherwise, if you try, it's, it's entirely possible because it happened to me, and it's happened to a lot of other people. To where if you tried going back to your base after moving your beacon and trying to go in the build mode, it just crashes your game. Like, it just crashes your game. There's nothing you can do about it. You can't, like, you can't open your finder. You can't open build mode. You can't do anything. It's just a miserable existence. So, for the love of God, once you've placed it, that shit better be down. I'm just saying. I'm saying that both as, like, a fair warning to everybody and also so you can just keep that shit in mind. But... It's, uh, you can, you can call it simple. Uh, uh, you might be able to guess what the grind is by seeing 164,000 of these fucking frames. More than that, I know, I know there's more that exists. Yes, yeah, 772,000, 84,000. I know I've crafted at least 500,000 of these fuckers. Um, I tried setting up a different system, like, it, I'll, I'll talk about alternatives in the end. But basically, the gist of this particular grind, okay, I'm gonna save, and I'm gonna load, so give me just one second. I'll talk about the gist while doing so. The gist of this is find a planet that has aluminum and iron and if you can, helium-3. But like I said, if you don't care about endgame and don't care about playing this for a long time, you're like, I just want to get to the high level and then move on with my life, then just aluminum and iron. Um, then you're going to want to focus on storages. All right, let's load so that I can actually show you crafting recipes. Um, <clears throat> so you put down extractors in whatever space is available. You connect those extractors to solid storage. Make sure they're two separate solid storages for efficiency. And as long as you have those solid storages filled, you'll be able to utilize whatever resources are in the solid storage as long as you're at that outpost. So if you have 900,000 stored at that particular outpost, you can use all 900,000, which is why this works. And it's beautiful. Um... <laughs> Now, some of the things that I do in this video, maybe not most people won't be able to do, but I'd just say that's only one particular step. But for the core of this, everybody can do it. Anyone can do it. It just, you, you can do this. My method just allows me a more speedy means to an end. Um, and I hope it doesn't give me trouble. Uh, no, it's not hacks. No, it's not mods. It's nothing like that. But I know not everybody's happy with it. Uh, but yeah, you see it's up there. Let's go ahead and go press F. Then press R. Then press V. Not going to worry about the armillary. You guys don't need to know what that is. Sorry, that was a spoiler. I didn't mean to show it, but also I can't help it. It's the first thing that pops out. So, extractors, you can place them wherever their zones are. Water vapor, it exists fucking everywhere. Put it wherever you want. If you are high enough in your research for your base, you get a commercial level, and then you also get an industrial level. All I have built up until this point has been uh, basic. Like, just regular extractors. So all these things you guys see are regular. Everything I'm showing you is with base materials, okay? Nothing I'm showing you is with maxed out pretty much anything. I didn't start out with maxed out anything. If anything, I started off in basic, and I literally got this, like, a couple hours ago. So it's not... And I, by then, I'd already had the entire base built. So will this be useful to me when I start making another one on another planet or in another playthrough? Absolutely. But right now, it's kind of not really that useful. But you just find a place where you can put this down. Uh, for me, like I said, I'm fortunate in the sense that there's actually a lot of places for me to put this down. Like, I could put it down right there. Um, I could build it. I could actually make a... Pro actually, no, I can't. I can't make that one. I can make a... Yeah, I can put down another one. I could put down a commercial one. It just requires more power. Um... There's one for iron as well. Like, it, just make sure you get the resources for the basic. We're only going to go over the basic ones for today. If it's helium-3, you want aluminum, nickel, and copper. If you make this base, you have aluminum and iron extractors, then you no longer need to worry about those resources as long as they're powered and they're funneling into storage. Okay? So if you have extractors placed, they are powered by the solar panels that you see right there or by wind turbines, and they're flowing and connected to the storage. Like, if I go to modify... You guys can see an option here. I'm not going to make this an output tutorial, but you can link, create output link by me right-clicking. But for you guys, you'll be able to press like RB or whatever, or X or whatever the hell it is on console, or if you're playing Xbox or PlayStation or whatever. Um, but you can connect it to whatever you like. I connect them all to the one at the bottom, 
and then and then I connect them all. So I go from left, I one, two, three, all the way to the end, and then I go up one, and then I go left, and then I go up one, and then I go right. Is this time consuming as shit? Yes. But does it mean that they're all interlocked? Yep. So if I go, if I just select this, they're all connected. Every single one of these is connected. And because they're all connected, okay, it doesn't matter how you connect them as long as they're all connected. But if you connect all of them, then they just become one solid storage. And if they're all one solid storage, I can have a shitload of resources. And if when I say a shitload, like don't expect like, oh, when I start doing this, I'm going to have a lot. It's like, no, it'll start small and it'll build up. Like I had 13 by 10. So I had 130 small storages and it got up to about 50, 50 to 70 K at first resource gathering wise, what it was able to fill up to. And then I added another layer of 10 smalls and then it got up to like 80, 90 K. And now that I've put those ex those large ones on top, it's built up to like a hundred K. Look at that. Like 101 K, 107 K like, it builds up guys i promise you'll get your resources back but extractors powered connect them to storage let's go ahead and go over so we kind of got to, you got to see for a second there so nickel copper and then i aluminum iron and tungsten these are all things all these things that you're seeing make a list that's what i did i made a list on my notepad i went to various merchants and i bought a shitload i overloaded i made three bases my third base is my successful one had I, without, without literally, you don't even need 100k to set up your first outpost. It's not a lot, okay? I promise. Early game, you can do this. Do either of the grinds that I told you about, and you'll be able to do it immediately. It's just a matter of grinding the re gra grabbing the resources from the merchants, whether it's UC distribution or going to Aquila and going to the general goods and ores and going back and forth. You will be able to find everything, and if you can't find it, look it up on Chrome or Google or safari whatever the hell and it'll tell you whatever merchant to go to but for the most part it's super 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 easy i promise you you can you it's it's not hard like <laughs> anyway but you have things that you are powered like solar array which is aluminum copper and beryllium copper and beryllium stock up please especially copper copper you're going to use a lot but beryllium that does add up too um it's going to cost more for you guys because i actually reduce the amount of resources it takes for me to build so don't expect my rates to be transparent to yours. You're going to be like, well, what does it cost more? It's like, because I have perks. If you have the same perks, then it might cost the same for you. But, yeah. Uh, uh, but wind turbine produces three power. Solar array does four. If I were to recommend one over the other, I would honestly recommend solar array. Um, if you, ha for some reason, are more advanced at this point, then I'd recommend solar dome or perhaps advanced wind turbine. But I know nine times out of ten for the people watching this, for anyone in this situation they're likely not there yet so solar array solar array is what i recommend you might have to place a lot of them like you see these i have probably at least 30 of the fuckers so like i said when i say you're going to need a lot of copper and beryllium i mean it assume for copper per and assume at least two to three beryllium per like it you're going to need a bit okay so stock up stock the fuck up so we've we've learned two things so far there are four, actually. One, plan it what biome to look for. Between crater and mountain, iron and aluminum. Make sure you got both those resources, at least. <laughs> Two, make sure you put down the extractors. Three, make sure you have power. And four, make sure you got storage. So, solid storage, it's super easy. Iron and aluminum and adaptive frame. You know what's funny? Iron and aluminum, you're going to have unlimited anyway if you fucking do this. So, I promise you... You will build it up a lot faster than you think. Within 24 hours, as long as you know what you're doing, you can be, at, well, as far as I am or far above me. It, I don't know. It all depends on your dedication. And adaptive frames are literally just made from iron and aluminum. And I'll show you guys that in a minute, uh, in a few. But if you guys do the research and unlock the storage, solid storage, the way that they work is they only carry a certain amount of weight. If you can put down a bigger one, and then you'll obviously be able to hold more. And if you can build up a lot of large solid storage, you can have probably hundreds of thousands. But considering I just got to large, I don't know how far it could go um, because I haven't used and abused it to the limit yet as I just you know started a video after I, I could because work and life and what? It's not the fucking point. But yeah, there's also storage for liquid if you're dealing with water vapor. There's also storage for gas, which is going to help you with the helium-3. 
and then there's this but you need to do research first and all this means is if you manufacture we're not going into all that all you guys need to know is what i've told you that's okay you need to know how to you need ex you need the you need the earth you need the planet you need the thing you need the biome to place the shit down you need to place the extractors down you need to have power you need to have storage build that storage up as much as you can then all you really need is an industrial workbench and then you can have a fucking field day now for me because i am the perfectionist that i fucking am i literally made an entire fucking facility and decked that shit out <laughs> made a watchtower i made everything <laughs> because i was just chilling but and you can do that too you can do that too if you want to make like an actual base because like i knew this would kind of be like my home base for like resources and shit so i was like well i might as well mix it out so i did and i made a play actually no at all three of my outposts like there's basically a max home excuse me but uh yeah it, i recommend an industrial workbench you'll need that for this method period um ooh, did not mean to switch my mode there um and then there's turrets and stuff you actually do want these once you're light later in your build um you'll just be making probably a mark one i just remember i recommend that uh iron lead beryllium i recommend this just because you might have people uh like enemies raiding your base destroying stuff like I, my first base i had people just i had zealots raid my base and they destroyed my power so they were destroying solar panels and everything in their site and it wasn't until i killed them that i was free of them um, and now I have turrets set up at all my bases on the off chance anything shows up that they just get obliterated. But uh, all mine are still only Mark 1. I actually don't have any Mark 3 built even though I just unlocked it. But problems for later. And then once you've done some research and you'll... Actually, I don't even know if it's research. I think it's a perk. But if you do that... Here, I'll, I'll pull it up. I'll literally pull it up. I don't mind. Let's show you guys perks that I think will help you. So let's go here. I know I'm bouncing around a lot, guys, and I'm sorry for that. I'm just trying to help out as much as I can. So, outpost management, which is in social, I highly recommend it because if you're able to get it to max, then your out your outpost extractors produce twice as fast, which is fucking insanity. Trust me when I say they're gonna produce fast enough, but that's that's broken. Uh, plants for habitation. Nope. That's not if you want to build on like extreme temperature places. Um. Outpost engineering, yes. This is what allows me to have the reduced resources. It is very, very worth it. I highly recommend it. Um, improved chems, I recommend that. Spacesuit and weapon engineering, highly recommend that. Where is the... I think the way I think it was uh, first outpost engineering is when I I think yeah the first outpost engineering I think is what allowed me to get the robots. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. And do, 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 trying to think if there's anything here that help would be helpful. No, not particularly. Uh, but special projects that'll help you. Um, outpost engineering will help you. Research methods is going to help you a lot. Trust me. I reckon research methods and outpost engineering should be your first two. I, I, I like literally just four really, really, really good ones right here. Spacesuit design is, is, is good for reasons that I shouldn't need to explain. Um, but, and then is there anything over here you need to worry about? Oh shit. Might as well upgrade that because I can. Um, But yeah, it, you can get perks to produce resources. You get perks to where you can build robots and shit. Like it's, it's actually insane the amount that you can improve this process within a day and 24 hour period after you start it. I promise you it is not that bad. With all my heart and soul, I promise it's not that bad. But if you, I have three of these guys placed, they increase your production rate of inorganic resources, iron and aluminum, helium, all that's included by 10%. Three, so that's 30%. If you have outpost management on, you can increase it again. So it's, you can improve how fast you acquire these just, 
just by having the right things on. Um, I don't think any of this is going to be huge. Having crew stations, I think, is crucial crucial at these things because if you have, like, Lynn and Heller, uh, you should know who they are because they're there at the fucking start of the game. I'm not counting that as a spoiler. If you don't even know who they are, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Um, but if you place them at your... If you place them at your outpost, they give you benefits. So I'd recommend putting them at your iron and aluminum outpost. Landing pad with ship holder, I don't think I have to explain why that's useful, but in case I do need to i will just say you can in a, fit any size ship you can modify your ship or any of your ships and you can buy any ship port that exists in the game from there so that is also where i built my ship is from that ship particular ship builder so it's very 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 convenient but coming out of this menu if you guys have any questions you can feel free to ask me down below what i am about to show you though is uh is how exactly to utilize utilize this in the most efficient way possible so let me save the game first. What you're going to need to do is sleep for one local hour. Just one local hour. Now, I recommend you go to Paradiso if you haven't been looting these. Because they you can buy them at a cafe in Paradiso because they sell them. Uh, this will be my last one, so I'll actually need to go to Paradiso later. Uh, but there's a drink you can drink. That restores health and gives you a two, plus 2% two XP gain for 15 minutes. Now, if you press B, whenever you go to sleep, if you're not married to a character, you get a 10% XP gain, and then I get the 2% for 15 minutes. Now, if you're married to a character, that 10 becomes 15, and then it's 17 instead of 12. But it all depends on where you're at in the game, but for this, it is perfectly fine. So just to show you guys how this works, how crazy this shit is, I'm going to show you guys how cracked it is. So for the next five to 10 minutes, you guys will literally just be watching me craft these. So I apologize <laughs> because this shit's about to get wild. So I have a hundred more than a hundred K of both. We're going to be crafting adapter frames, adapter frames. You require one aluminum and one iron to make one adapter frame. That's one. It, it's a little, I think it might be a little more over one XP per. But with the XP boost of 10%, 12% total for me. It's just so efficient, it's not funny. And look, it just keeps going. It literally will keep going until you run out of resources. And like I said, you don't need to have them on you. You don't need to have them on your ship. As long as they're in storage in your outpost, you can do this indefinitely. I literally sent a, a, a snap to Jason just like... 30 seconds to a minute of me just this just this screen of it flashing in and out and giving me xp and he was like dude how this is how find a planet with iron aluminum and if you can helium three get them all in the same outpost check done place extractors power those extractors place power then build a base just build a workbench do whatever you want based on how invested you want to be when you do so, over time, you'll start accumulating resources. When you accumulate enough resources, you can do adapter frames. Now, the reason I said you would be using Venus is that if you go to Venus and time skip, you're also time skipping the whole world, the whole Starfield world. So, if you, you can sleep on a bed on this planet, but as you guys saw, every every what would be two hours is basically one hour. So a full day is only 11 hours in game. It's not helping me much. But if I go to Venus, or one day is a hundred days. I can, I've like literally gone there to sleep for like five days in a row on Venus, which is 500 days. Made sure that my storage was capped, and then just unleashed health after coming back here, getting my 12% XP, and then just letting it go. And it's absolutely bonkers. I'm level 108, and I'm still leveling up. Now they didn't put a level cap, so that's that's their fault. But I. Now keep in mind, as you go up and it may not seem as impressive on me because I'm such a high level. As you go up and level, it obviously becomes harder to level. So I'm 108 right now. I'll predict I'll be like 115, 116, something like that. Maybe 114. May not, that may not. Actually, I'll say 116, just because I have more than 100k resources. And you're like eight levels. That's not a lot. Yeah, but I want you guys to keep in mind that the first time I did this from like level 28, I got all the way up to 37. 38 like it, it i went up at least 10 levels like it was ridiculous and that's only with 50,000 guys like 52,000 54,000 one of the two it was with the 12 percent xp buff 
But I went up 10 levels. And you can keep doing it. The more resources you have, the more levels you can go up. I think the most the most levels I jumped in one go was like 16. Like, it's absolutely bonkers how broken this is. And like I said, I it's as it's as simple as I can possibly explain it. No, I'm not gonna be building one from scratch. I do have a build uh do have the video of me building this outpost coming later in like a, it'd probably be like a couple of weeks. Two one week and a half, two weeks. Which people might be like, well that's not gonna help us now. It's like no, but you can figure it out yourself now. Learn. It's not that hard, I promise. It show it literally shows you where to place the extractors. Then you just gotta link it to the one storage. Link all the storages together. Make sure that there's enough power to actually power everything. It'll tell you if you don't have enough power. And then as long as everything's powered, it'll work. You'll have your resources, you can make your adapter frames, and you have your infinite XP. This is an infinite XP method. There's nothing better than it that I'm aware of that's more efficient, but all, like it's not, there's no, there's nothing more efficient because this helps you in so many ways. By crafting 100 resources, you get an achievement. By freaking leveling up to 50 and 100, you get two more achievements. Like, and I'm maybe that's like, oh, well, achievements aren't much of a gain. Dude, you're getting levels. I'm base. this is basically infinite perks as long as you've actually done the underlying requirements. Like, it's actually broken so unbelievably broken like i haven't finished the story campaign i'm like 70 percent of the way through the story campaign and then i stopped to do other things and it's like i'm gonna go back in and i'm gonna be god like i could have it on very hard difficulty and i'm sure as shit i'm gonna destroy everything my ship overpowered if you guys want to look that up like i said look up like i'm 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 like i'm beatable ship i'm op ship build whatever Find a ship that looks like mine. You'll find a video, a couple of the YouTubers. I know one of them was Kibbles Gaming. So shout out to that dude. I just don't remember all the names. Um, but there there were people behind these things. All these methods were found luck. That outpost one, I, 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 I mean, it does deserve a shout out. But at the same time, like, I feel like that one's way easier to discover. The two others, uh, were, I, I, I would never, I don't think I would have found very easily. I think you could have found them. It would just been very hard. The outside of the map, what I would have never found. But as far as, like, the the, the spaceship one, I probably could have found that one. But they are all deserve, they're all worthy of praise. A, pre, a prop goes out to the original creators. Like I said, I don't know who they were, but I'm, I am saying it was not me who discovered them. I am not Christopher Columbus up in this... Actually, no. <laughs> I am Christopher Columbus because Christopher Columbus also wasn't the first one to discover those lands. But it's like... <laughs> I was not the first person to find these things. I'm just somebody who wanted to use them and abuse them. Found, like, and has been using them and wanted to share that knowledge with the internet. And rather than finding separate videos and putting all this shit together, I'd rather have it all in one video. You guys can just enjoy, watch, like, watch it at 1.5 speed for all I fucking care. Because this might be like an hour, hour and a half long video when I only intended it to be half that. So it's like, I mean, I'm going to leave this to go. Like, look at, every, look at how ridiculous this is. You guys are just seeing the XP fucking fly. Like, this is what... Can, this can be you. I swear on all... The, uh, and everything. But 24 hours ago, I didn't have this outpost. I did not. Well, I mean, 24 hours ago, I might have just started this outpost. But it wasn't here. And look, now I'm at the point where it's like, I got 100k. Basically, all the research is done. Like, if you're diligent, you can get this done. It's very, 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 very easy. Like, outposts seem way more complicated than they actually are. If anybody has any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. I'll probably check the next day or two um, for comments and concerns or questions about people's thoughts. And you can tell me what you think. Because there's the pirate method, there's the merchant method if you want money. Um, or in the pirate method, I guess you whether you don't want to go for loot and some XP as well And then there's the god tier infinite XP for resources This is as broken as it gets guys. It, do it does it doesn't get any more broken than this like it's actually stupid as hell Also, in case you guys are wondering, um, the reason that I talked about earlier about not everybody being, may not be happy or be able to use the method that I use, it's because you, you typically have to click every single time and press E. I'm using a Logitech mouse, and with that Logitech mouse, 
I don't have to lift a finger. I press a button and it does all the work for me. So I just sit back, read, watch some YouTube. <laughs> no, I'm not a narcissist, so I'm not gonna say my own videos, but you should watch the other videos. But like, and I don't have to do anything. It's fucking beautiful. Honestly, between this and Forza Horizon, this watch has paid for its, or not, I said watch. <laughs> the Logitech mouses that I've had have paid for themselves multiple times over just out of sheer convenience. Because this is fucking dumb. Like, look up. This is so dumb. The fact that I don't... Like, I was getting so tired doing this manually. Because I did do it manually at first. And then I was like, there has to be an easier way. And then I was like... G-Hub. And I was like, I can set it. So I press a button and it does everything for me. And I did. And I... Damn, yeah, man. It is beautiful. <sighs> if you guys appreciate the content. If you guys appreciate the effort that I put into making this recording happen. Because, yes, I had to play for 24 hours straight... Um, I was even getting stuff done while I was working to get this video out. So, if you guys want to show your support, hit that like button, subscribe. Uh, I'll probably be taking a short break from Starfield after this recording. But, whoo! It's refreshing, man. Like, I hit level 100. Like, it's actually crazy how many achievements in this game I've gotten. Like, killing the 100 human beings, like, it, it, I think it's 100. No, it's, th it's two, 100, 200, or 300. Uh, regardless, though, going to that space station and going back and forth, that'll help you get there, but you also get money in the process. If you want to do the aliens, then I just recommend going to an alien-populated planet that's a high level and doing a money grind there. But, like, whew. So many things. So many things, man. <laughs> I will say this. I've never had it go so long that my 15 minute buff has run out. The rest of buff stays for 25, 24, 25 minutes. So there's no way. If you built enough large storage to where you were doing, going at this for 15 fucking minutes, you better be level 200. I swear. And all that is holy. And by then you'd have every perk in the game as long as you could afford it. Yeah, show your support. Hit the like button. Subscribe. Comment down below if you have any questions about this process, my method. Anything about what I did or how I did things. Ask me questions. I'll be happy to answer. Uh, I helped my friend Jason with weapon mod issues because there are some bugs in this game still. But sometimes there's nothing you can do and sometimes there's a workaround. So, like I said, three things to watch out for. And I'll repeat myself again. Don't move your outpost once you place the initial thing. Like that, that orange beacon, don't move it once you place it. For, if, unless you want to break your game. Just don't tr don't touch it. So make sure you put it in an ideal spot. Also, I'll recommend this. Save your game before you place it. If you save your game before you place it, then you can move it around to try to get the best area for your resources. That's what I did. So that might save you some trouble too. But So save your game before you place it. Once you place it, don't move it. If you have a workbench placed and it says you can't do anything or you're obstructed, save and leave the game, or save the game and reload, or no, no, no. If it's obstructed, then straight up go to desktop, exit out of your client, reopen client, open up Starfield again, and then it'll be back to normal. Um, but obviously save and go to desktop, that way you can actually save where you're at. If it's not letting you build, then you save and just load that save and that fixes it. So that's four, four things that can help you with your outpost. I hope, I hope, that, honestly, I hope this video helps people. I really hope it does. I didn't mean it to be so long, but I honestly try to cover things as fast as the game let me. And I'm just going to leave this running until it's done. You guys get to experience what it feels like to... I mean, I'm doing it much faster because obviously the tech's going to be able to do it far flat, far faster than a human can click. Otherwise, I would have stopped by now. But, like, you guys kind of get a, get a general idea. Look at all that XP. And then, if you go to Venus after you're done, sleep for a couple days, come back, you can just repeat the process. Like, it's wild how easy this is to use and use and abuse now i myself was focused on um 
I focused on my research and money and, and look at that it's done we're finally done guys look at that ran out of aluminum before we ran out of iron and it's still building up slowly but surely 117 I was superseded by one level the game just had to one up me we got nine levels off of that I was level 108 and now I'm level 117 and if you look there I'm almost level 118 that's how crazy that shit is. We crafted 101,000 of these. Now, before anybody gets any bright ideas, it's like, oh, oh, you should try walking around. I immediately just start dying. Like, it drains your oxygen instantly. Now, I will say that that's actually pretty damn effective for farming up this. Because when you finally get to a point where you can get rejuvenation, which is really overpowered, by the way. I really like it. Because being able to regen is something that I always appreciate in games. Um, you have to get your health beneath 25% and regen all the way in order for you and do that a certain number of times to increase the rank. All I did was hold that in my inventory, walk around, wait, walk around, wait. And actually, you don't even need to do that. All you need to do is walk around, sleep for an hour, walk around, sleep for an hour, walk around, sleep for an hour, and that counts. That's, that's probably the easiest way to cheese it. Um... That's also how I got wellness and other things up very, very, very quickly. Like, it's fucking damn near instant. It's actually insane. Uh, seeing if there's anything I can upgrade since I have so many levels, it's like, why the fuck not? No, nothing? Alright, well worth a shot. I can almost do... I want to get boost pack up, man. But, regardless. Let's go ahead and drop all this off. My weight of 122,000. It's literally just all this. Drop all that. Now, I don't recommend you pick those up at all. But, like I said, you guys saw my level. I, there's nothing for me to use my... I mean, there are things I can use my points on. Like, if you guys just want to see me use points, sure. I'll, 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 I'll buy every perk. I'll, I'll literally have bought every perk. I'll do that. Just fucking why not. I don't even think I'll be able to buy all of them. It'll be close, though. Like, I'm not, I'm not worried about getting a bunch of useless perks. Because, like, look at this. I, I, you have infinite XP. I am close to having damn near every perk in the game. Not all maxed, but damn near every perk in the game. And once you get to that point, you're, you're kind of set. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's not much left. I, did, I left all the damage perks till the end of the game. Like, I didn't start doing this until I was over level 100. So, it's like... You can take shots at me for that, but I just didn't feel like I needed the extra weapon damage. Now it's just like, well, I don't feel like I'm strong enough. <laughs> so why the fuck not? But I hope you guys enjoyed. That's about as comprehensive as I can make it. If you guys have questions, feel free to reach out. Jason, if you're watching this and you're still confused, let me know, and I'll explain anything and everything that I can. But I'll see you guys in the next video. Take it easy, guys.